Most blockchain entrepreneurs will fail. It's sad, but the good news is that most of them will do the same mistakes. And if you do these mistakes, you can avoid them. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat The Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Once in a while, I receive an email that says, Hi Julian, I have a great idea for a DeFi project and I want you to be my partner. This idea is amazing and it's gonna be so successful. Would you like to hear about my idea? But please don't tell anybody about it. How do you think I feel about this? Right away, I know the guy who sent me this probably never launched any business in his life and is probably really inexperienced. When I was younger, I was like this too. I used to overvalue ideas and that's normal. In Hollywood movies, they always show you the entrepreneur who spent so much time thinking about his business idea and once he finds the idea, boom, everything becomes so easy because he has the idea, but it's his idea. You need to protect it. Otherwise, somebody else will steal his idea and make all the money instead of him. So terrible. But think about it one minute. If all the value was in the idea, how on earth could anyone build any business? Because when you launch your business, you can't keep the ID secret anymore. You have to tell everybody and everybody can steal your ID. In reality, IDs are plentiful, free and mostly worthless. How about Facebook? Was it the first social media to have this ID? No, there were other before like MySpace, but it's Facebook who won because it had the best execution. What matters is the execution, your actions. So don't start to overvalue your IDs. On the contrary, talk about your ID to other people and try to get their feedback. Other people will enrich your ID, make it better. Talking about your ID will attract potential co-founders, employees, investors, users. It's all positive. There are many people who just build their project in a silo, totally isolated from the rest of the ecosystem. If you build something outside of the blockchain, in some cases, it can make sense to have a standalone product. But in the blockchain industry, the most valuable projects have many integrations with other projects. This is especially true in DeFi. What makes this possible is the open and permissionless nature of the blockchain technology. You don't need anybody's permission to use the API of any smart contract. For example, I'm working on a voting system for my channel using a token. Some people already ask me if they can integrate my token in their project. But no matter what I answer, technically they will be able to integrate my token anyway. This is really a giant opportunity, don't waste it. In comparison, if you were building a project in, let's say, the fintech industry, you would struggle to integrate with the existing financial system because nothing is open. You can go to see big banks and ask if they have a public API. They don't. They don't want to share anything. And there is nothing you can do about it. A few months ago, I did another video to show people how they can evaluate a DeFi project and detect scams. And one thing I said is on the page of the project, how the token is presented. Is it the main element of the project? Do they mostly talk of the token and not much else? If that's the case, it can really come across as a scam. For most DeFi projects, the token is really important and as an entrepreneur, you want people to believe your tokens has some value, but the token is only one element of your project. Your project must solve a real problem for people. For example, for decentralized exchanges, the problem solved is how to trade financial assets in a decentralized way. Other example, for lending protocols, the problem solved is how to borrow and lend financial assets in a decentralized way, etc. You have to start with how the system works. Then, inside your system, you may or may not have a token. But in any case, the token comes second. Your blockchain project should be much more than just the token. Crypto is very cyclical. There are some short periods of bull market like now and longer period where the market is most stable or even bearish. Because everybody has a big fear of missing that during bull markets, including entrepreneurs during bull markets, it's tempting to try to make as much money and as fast as you can at all costs by doing some bullshit project that might damage your reputation. And you think it doesn't matter because you can make so much money anyway. But most successful blockchain entrepreneurs didn't become successful with their first project. In general, before doing the big project that becomes super successful, they created several other lesser known projects. 
with this other project they didn't waste their time they built their reputation and it's so important you need to build trust in the community so that when you launch a new project you can carry over the community of your previous project and build on top of that this is like a snowball effect or like compound interest in investments you have to see long term it's okay if you don't become successful and rich right away during this bull run be in it for the long term A lot of blockchain entrepreneurs think that they can just be the business guy and delegate all the technical part to developers. Some people even think they don't need to pay developers, they think they are the business person and the technical guy should already be happy by just getting some shares or token as the only payment. This is completely unrealistic and it shows a deep misunderstanding of the power balance in this industry. First of all, this is a highly technical industry, so you do need some good blockchain developers in your project. But blockchain talent is in high demand and low supply. As a result, blockchain salaries are high and blockchain developers know it. It's just very expensive to hire good blockchain developers. On top of it, when you start a project, you will probably need to make a lot of changes and move really fast. But if you hire developers, you have the overhead cost of communicating with them and it can slow you down a lot. That's why I strongly recommend to learn coding yourself so that you can save a lot of money on developers and you can go way faster. You don't need to become a professional coder. You just need to be able to do the initial prototype. And after, hopefully, you will be able to raise some money and you can progressively delegate your coding task to full-time professional developers. And if you look at successful entrepreneurs in blockchain, you will realize that many did exactly what I just said. And since we're talking of learning how to code as a blockchain entrepreneur, why don't you learn how to write a smart contract in Solidity? That's a great way to get started in blockchain development and for that you can follow my series on Solidity. This is one of the best content on my channel. I will see you there.